When you first start a calculus class, you're usually faced with two initial problems. One of them is called the tangent problem, and one of them is called the velocity problem. Turns out these two problems are very close to the same ideas and use some of the same techniques to decipher. The tangent problem tends to be the mathier of the two problems. Uh, and what I mean by that is, at first glance, it seems to only be of interest to mathematicians. Uh, turns out that's not true, but let's start with that tangent problem and what it says. In general, the tangent problem asks us to find the equation of the line tangent to a curve at a specific point. Okay. So we, let's say we have a curve, and we have a point on that curve. Okay. What we mean by tangent, we need to define that first. A line tangent to this curve at this point would intersect this curve only once, and it needs to follow the direction of the curve. So for example, this is what we mean by a tangent line. Um, if you have a curve, and let's say a very similar one, and here's a point, this particular line would not be tangent at that point, because while it does intersect your curve once, it does not follow the direction of your curve. Now that's not a mathematically precise definition of tangent, uh, but until we get a little bit farther into calculus ideas, that's the best we have for you. So what we mean by tangent line is it's got to hit your curve once and generally follow the direction of that curve. Uh, in opposition to a tangent line, we will also be discussing what's referred to as a secant line. Now secant lines hit your curve more than once. In this particular case it hits twice. Let's look at a specific example. Uh, for example, find the equation of the line tangent to the curve f of x equals x squared at the point 1, 1. Okay, so this is now a specific curve at a specific point rather than just generally. So when we're asked to find the equation of the line, those are some words you want to kind of focus on because whenever anyone asks you to find the equation of the line, you only ever need to come up with two pieces of information to make that happen at most. You need a point and you need the slope of the line. You need a point on the line and the slope of the line because if you have those two things, you then get to use the point-slope form of a line. We pretty much have no creativity in what we name things. If we call it the point-slope form of the line, it's because you need a point and slope to use it. This is it, y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1, where m is the slope of your line, and the point on your line has an x-coordinate of x sub 1 and a y-coordinate of y sub 1. If you can come up with those two things, you can find the equation of the line. So let's take a look at a graph of this particular situation. The curve, there's our function, y equals x squared. That's of course the quadratic. Uh, it's a parabola with the vertex at the origin. And then this point, the red point here, is the ordered pair 1, 1. And I've drawn in what will be the tangent line uh, to the curve y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. So we're looking for the equation of the red line but again, what we need is the slope of the red line. And the problem that we're running into is the fact that we only have one point. Now we know how to find slope between two points. That would be our slope formula. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. The problem is we've only got one point. So generally what we do as mathematicians when we're faced with a problem that we don't know how to solve, we try to turn it into a problem we do know how to solve. So since we know how to find slope between two points, let's just add a second point to this curve. So here is a second point on this curve. Now I've made it so that I can put it anywhere. Um, and let's say for argument's sake I put it here. That is now at 2, 4. Okay, so that is another point on this particular curve. So I now have two points to work with. So if I put in a line that contains both of those points. So that'll be this green line. What I now have is a secant line, and that's why we were making sure to also define secant. It hits my curve in two places, both at 2, 4, and it also passes through 1, 1. Could I then find the slope of that particular secant line? And the answer is, of course I can. It's got two points. 
if we let x equal 2, and keep in mind that what that means is that we are going to be finding the slope of the secant line between the ordered pairs 1, 1, and a point that has an x coordinate of 2. And since this is the function f of x equals x squared, the y coordinate is the x coordinate squared. So this is literally the slope of the secant line between the ordered pairs 1, 1 and 2, 4. So there's your change in y or delta y over your change in x, which is more familiarly you might remember this as y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So here is your y value, there's your 4. This is the y value that came with your ordered pair. And then over the change in the x value, so this is the x value of 2, and then this is the x value of 1. I just want to make sure you understand that those are not the same one. One of them came from the x coordinate and one of them came from the y coordinate. And when you get done doing that calculation, you find that the slope of that particular secant line is 3. What if I use that slope to estimate the slope of the red line, the slope of the tangent line? It's not a very good estimate. There's a distinct difference between these two, the slopes of these two lines. But if I wanted to maybe make it a little better, instead of placing this second point at 2, 4, maybe instead what I could do is place it at an x-coordinate of 1.5. Now its y-coordinate would then be 2.25. Now that's 1.5 squared. And if I calculated the slope between 1.5 and 2.25 and 1, 1, perhaps then I would be able to get an even better estimate. Our slope then, again, it's change in y over change in x, is there's your y value minus your y value over your x value minus your x value. And when you do those calculations, 1.5 squared minus 1 divided by 1.5 minus 1, you get 2.5. And again, it's better, but it's not necessarily um, the right slope. So if I want an even better estimate, maybe what I do is move this to, let me move it even closer, maybe 1.1, 1 1.05, 1 1 1.1, 1 1.01. .1. So as I move this closer and closer, eventually what I'm going to be able to do is calculate the slope of a secant line that is so very close to that tangent line that it's not going to be that different. Let x value be 1.1. Again, your slope at that point, y value minus y value over x value minus x value. Your slope then is 2.1. And if we move it even closer to 1.01, .01, we get a slope of the secant line of 2.01. Notice what's happening to these slopes. The closer that we let our second point get to 1, 1, so x value of 2, 1 1.5, 1 1.1, 1 1.01, 1 .01. our slopes seem to be approaching a specific number. Here's even closer, 1.001. That's very, very close. Notice our slope goes to 2.001. So these are what we call the numerical calculations. And notice a couple of things. One, they take a while to come up with. Two, you pretty much need a calculator to do this. Um, and three, they get a little tedious after a while. I mean, we just did five calculations, and I had them pre-done for the slide, but these take a while to do. So sometimes what we're interested in is doing this a little bit more generally. So more generally, we can write that the slope should always be equal to x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Now that comes from your ordered pairs are 1, 1, because that's the same, that's our fixed point for this specific example. But the other ordered pair is some x value, we're just going to let it be a general x value, and then the associated y value. Well, since this is that the function f of x equals x squared, your y values are found by squaring your x values. So it's still y value minus y value over x value minus x value. Now this is going to allow us to use a graphing utility if we choose. You don't have to do it this way, but this can speed up some of your calculations. This is a screenshot of a TI 
Uh, I believe this one's an 83 plus, but it would be very similar if you were doing 84 pluses. This is an older operating system, and I actually did that on purpose to make sure you see you have to be very careful about where you put in the parentheses. So this is my slope, okay? So it's x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1. And when I create a table for that, okay, a couple of things. One, because it's in my calculator, this is listed as an XY table. This is not an XY table. It's an XM table. In other words, this is my X value, two. This is the slope of the secant line associated with that specific X value. So be a little careful about how you read these. Notice the numbers are exactly the same as the numbers we just did by hand in the previous slide. Uh, if you are wanting to come up with these x values, generally when you open up a table in your calculator, uh, your x values are populated with 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., which is not helpful for this particular example. If you want to be able to generate these x values, what you need to do is go to your calculator, um, and again, this is specifically for a Texas Instruments calculator. Uh, you're going to go to second, and then you're looking for table settings, table set is what they call it, and what you want to do is change your independent variable to ask. What that will do when you go back to your table is you literally get to just uh, type in any x values that you choose and that's how I've generated this table. So, in conclusion, the slope does appear to be approaching 2. So we guess that the slope of the tangent line to that curve, to f of x equals x squared, at 1, 1 is 2. Which would tell us that the equation of the line would then be, and this is our point slope form of our line again, there's y minus y sub 1 equals that slope, which we're guessing is 2. That's an important point on this. Um, when you do these kinds of tangent problems in this way, these are a guess or estimate. It's a good estimate, it's an educated estimate, but it's an estimate. You do not know this for a fact. If that estimate is true, then the equation of that line would then be y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1, which if you solve for y gives you 2x minus 1, which if you look at the graph, uh, if you graph both f of x equals x squared and y equals 2x minus 1 on the same screen, you should see that that is in fact the tangent line to the curve at 1, 1.